Cartel Wives Chapter 9. Here we go. Guadalajara. Olivia. Val. There wasn't a year that went by that Peter and Junior didn't do it big for their birthday. For their 23rd on June 12, 2004, they rented out a hundred rooms in Puerto Vallarta for a few days, and their wholesalers, couriers, workers, friends, and family from Chicago, Atlanta, L.A., and New York all came in. Some brought their wives or girlfriends, and others brought their side chicks. Uh -oh. During the day, we took over the hotel's pool and had one big pool party. And at night, we rented out Mikado, which was the Benihana of Vallarta. The actual party on the day of was at Nikki Beach Club, right on the water, and it was an all-white private event. Everyone was dressed in white linen, completely iced out. It was beautifully decorated with white roses and white candles, white flowers draped over the cabanas, and bottles of Cristal on every table. The ambiance was breathtaking. There were almost 200 people there, and even the famous mariachi singer Alejandro Fernandez was hanging out at the beach. We were having the time of our lives, dancing and drinking with these fools had their own players ball without a care in the world. It felt like we never left Chicago, yet we didn't have to worry about the Fed snapping pictures. That was the luxury of living in Mexico. You could enjoy things and blend right in. I was sprawled out in our private cabana sipping some Cristal, just taking it all in, when I heard Junior's voice over the speaker. Excuse me, excuse me. Junior oh. was holding the mic with a big smile on his face. He loved making people feel welcome and always wanted to share his happiness with everyone. Thank you for coming down and celebrating with me and Peter. It's so nice to see all of you. Now, if I can take a moment, I'd like to ask my beautiful girlfriend to come up with me. Now, I never mind having the spotlight on me, but something was different here. The DJ we'd flown in from New York had turned the music down when Junior got up, but he suddenly cut it off entirely. I was left sitting there in my tight white dress, holding a glass of Cristal with every single eye on me. I put my drink down and walked up on stage, not even realizing what was happening. Junior paused. Olivia, you're the love of my life. You're the best thing that ever happened to me, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. He got down on one knee, but I was still clueless, just standing there in total shock. Will you marry me? Oh my God. He pulled out this massive rock. It was probably 10 carats, absolutely heart-stopping. Olivia, baby, is that a yes? Obviously, this wasn't my first proposal, so I should have been used to this, but I wasn't. Hmm. Standing up on that stage, it was like the world had come to a screeching halt right when the DJ stopped spinning. I felt like I'd been put on a pedestal, like I was the most special woman on earth. Yes, yes! I started crying, happy tears, as I jumped up and hugged and kissed Junior. Everyone started clapping as he squeezed me right back. I realized, I'm not dreaming. I'm finally going to have my happily ever after. After everyone went home and things settled down, I started to think about the actual wedding. I decided that because this wasn't my first trip down the aisle, I was going to stay engaged for at least a year to make sure we were ready. This was Junior's first marriage, and I wanted to make sure it was what he really wanted, too. Plus, I knew Junior needed time to change his life, and we also had to figure out where we wanted to live. Junior needed time to change his life. That's not happening. We in the game. Ain't no change the life. We can't turn this over. Live. San Juan was nice, but we needed to be around people other than Junior's family and find a place where we could build a future for our family. We started looking for houses in Guadalajara pretty much immediately. We'd been spending a lot of time in Guadalajara. 
With over four million people, it's Mexico's second largest city, with six universities, a huge art scene, and a white-collar industrial center with companies like IBM, Intel, and GE. The culture felt European, not Latin American, and it was basically everything San Juan wasn't. I was in awe of its architecture and beauty. It was so developed and clean. I felt like we were back in the States. You would have never known that it wasn't all wholesome. But in the late 1970s, traffickers from Sinaloa had been pushed out by the military and decided to relocate there. They formed the Guadalajara Cartel, which was crushed in 1985. But given Guadalajara's location, close to drug routes and Pacific ports, a lot of drug lords stayed. They regrouped, joined or formed new cartels, and flourished. Today, Guadalajara is the money laundering capital of Mexico. Now that we were flying under the radar, we wouldn't stick out like sore thumbs. In fact, our neighbors consisted of doctors, lawyers, and drug lords, all living side by side. In Guadalajara, a lot of people in the drug trade went to college in the States, so they're educated, proper. They look like they just stepped out of Barney's, dressed in Armani and Gucci. It wasn't like Chicago, where you could spot a drug dealer a mile away because of his blinding gold chains and spinning rims. Pick out any house you want, Junior said. And they're on the Rodeo Drive of Mexico. And I went to town. We decided on a nice part of town called Zapopan, and we found a house that was absolutely stunning. It had a cobblestone driveway, so even though we were in Mexico, when you drove up to the property, you felt like you were in Miami. The door was freaking enormous, but I didn't pay it any mind because I couldn't keep my eyes off the staircase. It was massive, like Gone with the Wind style, but modern. The master bathroom looked like the spa where Junior and I would go on the weekend, and I remember thinking, I'll never have to pay for a spa day again. I couldn't find a single detail I wanted to change, besides adding color to the walls. But I still had somebody drive furniture, pillows, and sheets over the border from Restoration Hardware and Neiman Marcus because I wanted to make it feel like we were still in Chicago. Junior and I had sex in every single room in that house, Get multiple it. times a day. I didn't care if we spent every second alone. He was all that I needed. Junior and Peter's good fortune must have rubbed off on me, too, because my producing career took off. Being married to Kay had opened up a lot of doors in the hip-hop world for me, and Junior helped me maintain those relationships. Soon, I got a million-dollar deal with Universal Records, back when the labels weren't paying out like that. This is my own million, I thought, like real, legit money. This is our winning ticket. If it all falls apart, this is my and Junior's way out. That first year in our new house, that's we built good relationships. That's a different way out cool. right there. That's a different way out right there. That's the, you know, Easy E route, the, you know. But Easy E wasn't on the level that they were on. I don't know if I don't know if Val understood at that time the level that they were on. Andre and Scott Storch and started to me maintain those relationships. Soon, I got a million-dollar deal with Universal Records, back when the labels weren't paying out like that. This is my own million, I thought, like real, legit money. This is our winning ticket. If it all falls apart, this is my and Junior's way out. That first year in our new house, we built good relationships with Cool and Dre and Scott Storch and started recording an album. I began spending more time in L.A., Miami, and New York working with A-list producers like Kanye West, Swiss Beats, and Trackmasters. I always stopped off in Chicago to see Xavier, who was doing so well in high school that we'd all decided he'd be happier staying in the States. If he wasn't in class, I'd take him with me because he thought it was exciting to meet rappers like Rick Ross, Akon, and Pusha T., he'd get totally starstruck. I was traveling nonstop, and Junior and I missed each other deeply. But I felt like I was doing my part to build a great future for our family. 
We talked day and night on Skype and had phone sex to stay close. I loved him hey, even more because... Here you go. She just told y'all about that firsthand, <laughs> all right? When asked the question if she remained faithful to her husband uh, while he was locked up. Because he was so supportive of my work and my dreams. So even he when built they were, me up. So even when they were traveling and she was in the music business and he was home, they kept a, uh, they kept a healthy uh, relationship. And he believed in me. He always told me, I'm so turned on by how strong, smart, and wise you are. I'm with a real woman. It's why I fell so hard for you. At home, I was still taking care of my man. I adored serving him food, color coordinating his closet, and laying out his underwear, socks, clothes, and jewelry on the bed. I was determined to be a good wife, and I couldn't wait for the wedding to make it even more real. He was building a life, and I was too. More than that, being in a new place, away from everyone, I felt like Junior was starting to change. He seemed to be seeing things my way about wanting something different, hmm. not continuing in the drug trade. Still, it would take time. Until then, we'd enjoy our life together in Guadalajara. But man, we sure did miss Mia and Peter. Mia. I totally understood when Olivia and Junior said they wanted to move. Every day in San Juan felt like a romantic date, and being here helped my relationship blossom. But it was a small town. You had to leave to feel like you were anywhere. Peter and I were pouring every minute of our free time and money into our horses, and it was our whole world. But after a while, even that got lonely. We visited Junior and Olivia right after they moved into their house in Guadalajara, and we loved it. It was so comfortable, so homey. Olivia and I would sit inside and gossip for hours while Junior and Peter went into another room and had meetings or talked about business. I didn't know it, but that part of their lives was taking root in Mexico. Olivia being in Guadalajara was going to take Peter and Junior's business to a whole new level. Junior was such a likable guy. He was always laughing, joking, and so positive that people warmed up to him quickly. In Mexico, men didn't really bring their wives around, but because I was always with him, they just got used to me being there. As Junior started networking, he'd meet new people every single day, and when he'd make one connection, it would lead to another. Hmm. I'm telling you, the connections he formed there made Junior and Peter millions. In the city. Especially that there was other hustlers all lined up in that town because it was logistically the right town to be in if you was a hustler. It's normal for people in the drug trade to mesh with legitimate business people. Narcos are well-educated and respectable. So it's just not a big thing for a regular guy to hang out with a drug dealer. Happens all the time. In fact, when we were buying our house, the architect who was helping us out pulled Junior aside one day. Hey, I want to introduce you to someone. His name is Weedo, and you have a ton in common. He's here from L.A., so I'll hook you up. There was no winking or nodding. It was just understood that Weedo was in the business, and so was Junior. My husband met Weedo a few days later, and sure enough, he was instrumental in helping Junior and Peter set up their trafficking route through L.A. Hmm. Then Junior met a man named Cuate, who had a huge mansion like in Scarface. Everything was draped in red velvet and gold trim, and when we were invited over for dinner, he served us on Versace China. There were so many angels, I swore I was in church, I thought I was loud, but this guy was over the top. On another occasion, Junior and I were eating ribs at Tony Roma's. Junior left to use the restroom, was gone for what felt like forever, and came back with some random guy next to him. He introduced me to him, saying his name was Sobrino, and after some small talk, this new friend went back to his own table. You just picked up some strange guy in the bathroom, I <laughs> joked. What the hell was that all about? <laughs> he was wearing a Cubs hat. You'd be surprised the money moves that. So we started talking. We have a lot in common. 
I picked up his tab. I started thinking, a lot in common. I've heard that before. Hmm. Man, this whole city is connected. It was such a small world in the drug trade. You meet someone in the bathroom, and sooner rather than later, you're trafficking millions of dollars of drugs together. Mia. Peter was in Guadalajara all the time, or on the phone, but actually being with his brother was something he really needed, personally and professionally. I really miss Junior and Olivia, and I started to wonder whether we should move to Guadalajara too. P, please, I said. I need to be in a city again. We're both homesick here. Absolutely. Anything for you. True to form, he just wanted to make me happy. And even though he enjoyed the peaceful life, we started looking for houses that winter. We never found anything that caught our eyes. But one day, Peter turned to me with this big, bright smile. What if we just buy the lot across the street from my brother's place? We can build our own house. I didn't even pause to think about it. Really? Okay. At the time, Peter and I were both totally obsessed with Jessica Simpson's house on a reality show with her then-husband, Nick Lachey. I thought it was perfectly simple and so cozy. Build it. We recorded every single episode and watched them over and over again, writing down every little detail we loved about the house. <laughs> when we actually started the design and construction, Peter let me take the lead. He wanted to give me a perfect home. It was going to take a while to build it to our specifications, so while we were waiting, we bought an unfinished house directly behind Junior and Liv's home. We even knocked down the wall that separated the- So they got the lot in front, the lot across the street, and they got the crib behind them. <laughs> Family. The properties and decided to build a massive pool and jacuzzi sitting between them. When the plans were there done, it looked like the ultimate retreat. And best of all, we were finally going to be all together. Sounds like a resort. Peter and I missed everything about the United States. We dreamed about American food so much that we searched and searched until we found a store that sold Lay's potato chips and candy you could only find in the States. We'd bring our bags of food into our bedroom, cuddle in bed, and have movie night. We loved Mexico, but it just wasn't home. So when we got the lot and started to make the plans for our house, we decided we wanted a secret room for just the two of us. This would be a place where we could get away and feel like we were thousands of miles away from our real lives. We'd be free from meetings and phone calls and workers coming into town, and we could make love, talk all night, and get lost in each other. In that room, we'd never feel lonely. We'd always feel safe. Unfortunately, we never got to enjoy it. We never even set foot in that room because we had to give up the house before we'd even moved in. What happened? 